Hello everyone, welcome to Balin Chess Kids. Today I'm showing the game played by both Hart and Yak Lee. And this beautiful game complete in only 21 moves. And let's see how the game play. The game starts with the pawn to d4, d5, c4. And here you have the queen game beat. And the game continues with a c6. Then knight f knight to c3 and knight to f6. After this, you the black convert this game to a slave defense. And here the pawn just goes c takes d5. Then the c takes d5 again. And after this, bishop to g5 was played trying to pin the knight. And here the knight then goes to e4 and attack the bishop again. So this is the first five move, and you can see that the position is equal. After this, the knight just capture the knight, knight takes e4, and the pawn takes d4. And here the white continue to play a3. The better move at this point will be moving the rook to c1 and trying to attack the c5. But in the HOK, a3 was played. And after this, the queen to b6, trying to have the idea to attack the pawn, also attack the pawn at b2 and d4. Then the game continue with bishop to d2 giving up the pawn and at this position the best move for the black would be capture the pawn and this will win a pawn ahead while capturing the b2 pawn will be a slight disadvantage for example if you capture the pawn here the black will be getting a one pawn so the the uh, white can use the bishop to go to attack and go for the action and after action, after a serious option, the black still winning a pawn ahead. And if you don't go for action, you can move the queen to c2. Still, the black is slightly better because it got extra one pawn. And Back to the position bishop d2. If you capture the b2 pawn, then the white will just play a e3 and the white will just continue to develop the pieces easily and fast. And the position will just be equal. So, in the actual game, after this move, e5 was played. Uh, and the black giving up a uh, sacrifice with the pawn and trying to gain the center. And if you capture the pawn, then the queen will now just capture the pawn. And this queen will just continue to capture the pawn at e5 again. So, after e5, the White play bishop to c3, trying to protect the pawn, both of the b2 and d4 pawn. After this, e3 was played, and here we trying to attack the pawn at f2. Another suggestion that the black can play is use the pawn to capture the pawn. After bishop capture. Then you can continue to develop the bishop and go for the exchange. And this allows the king to go for a short castling as well. So this will bring black to more activity and the king will be safe. While the white still need to move these two pieces out, only can go for a castling. So after capture and capture, and the position now remain equal. 
So E3 was played and here the white just captured the pawn. Then the black push E4. After this, the queen goes to C2 trying to attack the pawn at E4. And here the best move for the black to play and strong would be F5 to protect the pawn and develop the pawn ahead. But instead, in the actual game, bishop f5 was played. After this, at this position, here, the white played a very beautiful sacrifice and a very strong move by playing g4 pawn and attack the bishop. And g4 was played. And if you capture the pawn with the bishop, Bishop takes g4. Then the queen will continue to capture the e4 pawn and check the king and also double attack the bishop together with the king and we will win the piece ahead. So, for example, after this move, the queen will just capture the pawn. And if you want to protect the bishop, if you move the bishop to e6, then you can just push the pawn and able to capture the bishop as the bishop cannot move as it's been pinned by the queen. So now any move such as uh, knight to d7, then you just capture the pawn. To capture the bishop with the pawn. Back to this version, if you protect with the queen, such as queen to e6, then here you can just use the queen to capture the pawn at b7 and the rook is being trapped and able to capture the rook in the next move. For example, after capture this, you cannot protect. And if you want to use the queen to c6 to protect and capture it, then you can just use the bishop to counter attack the queen and also capture it. So queen to b6 and after you you capture the queen. The bishop again will just capture and this bishop still able to win the rook. It's a very simple idea to attack. So g4 is a strong move and also a sacrifice. And because of this, pawn is poisoned. The bishop cannot capture the pawn. Therefore, the black moved the bishop away to g6 and after this the white continued to storm the pawn and attack and the first the moving up the knight to h3 to keep on develop after this bishop to e7 was played and now the queen goes to a4 and check the king then knight to c6 was played and now the white go for a long passing with the idea to push the pawn forward and attack the knight. So the black just go for a long castling. After this, knight to f4 keep on develop the pieces to attack the black pieces. And here also you allow the pawn to keep on moving to h4, h5 and attack the bishop check the, the king with the pawn, capture the pawn and check the king. So after this move, the best move to play for the black would be push the pawn forward to f5 to capture the pawn. For example, after f5 will play, then the pawn capture, bishop capture, then you can just continue to play a knight to d5 trying to attack the four pieces and the queen to d8 then the game will be much equal or at least the white is just clearly better for me by winning a pawn 
and back to this position. In this position, the, act the actual game played was A5. And this is a question mark move, which is a, not a very good move. And this allowed white to play H4. And the blue path indicate the critical path for the white to continue to attack and win the bishop. So after this, the black play queen to a6 and with the idea of preparing to move the pawn to b5 and to attack the queen. And also at this move, h5 was played in the show game. And back to then, you not suggest to take the bishop because after you take the bishop and go for action, the pawn will just capture and now you push the d5 pawn to attack the knight, then the pawn will just counter to attack. So here, the white just capture the free pawn and able to attack the bishop and also attack the knight at the same time. So after this, bishop just attack the pawn, then the pawn can forward to attack the bishop. So here you have a multiple attack. And still in this position, white will be slightly better in this position. So h5 was played and here the white has a decisive advantage now. And after b5 was played, then the queen just moved away to b3, queen to b3. And here b4 was played and trying to attack the bishop. And in the actual game, the white just captured the bishop at h6. And after this, the black just captured the bishop. And this is the first 20 move. And with the last move, the pawn capture c3 is a tactical blunder which caused the black to lose the game. At this move, the white able to mate in 3. I give a couple of seconds to figure out how the continuation of white to play and mate in 3. Well, congratulations for those who found the answer and for those who like to enjoy the show, here are the moves that the white can play and make in trade. In the actual game, the brilliant move and sacrifice would be queen takes the f7 pawn and check the king and this is a very beautiful sacrifice. And after this 21 move, the black resigned the game. And if you want to continue the game, such as you use the rook to capture the queen, then you can just use the pawn g takes the h7 pawn. And if the king goes to h8, then the knight will go to g6 and you have the checkmate with the knight. And at this position, the king cannot capture the pawn because the rook is protected it. So any move to the left or right, it will be win by the white. So if you move the king to f8, then the pawn formation to a queen or a rook, it will win the game with the back rank check made. And back to this position, bishop takes the pawn takes the c3. Uh, the white not to capture the pawn, that is, it will be a bad move. If you capture the pawn at c3, then the knight will play knight to e5. This is to allow the rook to direct attack and pin and win the 
screen. So if you capture with the point such as takes the night, then you can just use either of this rope and win back the queen. So after this, you can just move a knight to d5. Then the knight will just capture the pawn, and with this, it will remain the equal position. So the queen capture the pawn will be a bad move. And back to this version, if you play rook take h7 first, and this also will just give white a query battle only instead of winning the game. And because this, the rook can just play rook a to b8 and continue to attack the queen and if the queen move away the pawn can capture and check the king for example after queen to d5 then the queen can go to b5 and go for queen exchange and if you do not exchange such as you capture the pawn if you capture the pawn it doesn't work because the rook can capture and now you do not have the pawn take the hash pawn and check the king and if you move away the king to any place such as you capture the pawn then the queen will just capture the b2 and it will be a checkmate for the black so at this position you can see the best move of a brilliant sacrifice would be Queen take the pawn at f7 and check the king and then continue to attack with the pawn and go for a checkmate. And with this, thank you.